Hey, hey, how's it going? What's up, sad boys? How are we doing? Nothing makes me feel more nostalgic for yesteryear than music, particularly music from the sea. I don't think any other record company in the early 2000s defined music like Victory, Victory Records. Victory Records, the company that signed all your favorite bands, then proceeded to f*** them over for every part of their career. They created the scene, and then they burned it all to the ground. And in case you didn't know, Victory Records is no longer Victory Records. Like, there's still Victory Records. As you can see, there's still a fucking website. The company itself is no longer independent. It got bought out. They're fucking big corporate sellouts now. I think that was really disappointing for a lot of us music fans is watching all of our favorite bands slowly get choked to death by the very label that provided us everything. Basically, the music scene was defined by three genres, emo, screamo, and metalcore. Each one a varying degree of spiciness, I would say. And Victory Records incubated these little bands and force, I mean, allowed them to create organic music out of the sheer love of the art form. You have your genre staples, your genre heroes, like a day to remember, a hero of fake, action, action. A tray you originally started out on Victory Records. Bayside, beneath the sky, between the buried and me, blood for blood. Carnifex, catch twine too. Get out of here, I don't want your fucking newsletter. Come back, kid. Corpus Christi, darkest hour. Fucking everyone and anyone who wasn't on Fearless or Fueled by Ramen. So you can see why Victory Records became so highly praised. It always felt like it was one step forward. With Hawthorne Heights, Silver Scene, it always felt like it was slightly ahead of the genre. Until it wasn't. As they went on, they sort of got a reputation. As in, they would stifle all your creativity and choke every fucking penny they could get out of you. The most egregious example, not even showing up in their alumni. Streetlight Manifesto may be some of the greatest musicians in the rock scene today, but the treatment they received was so fucking heinous when Toy K, when he made an all acoustic album version of Streetlight Manifesto's release with Victory Records, they demanded the rights to release the acoustic songs. And when Streetlight Manifesto said, those aren't yours, then Victory Records withheld the pre-orders for the vinyls, the merch, essentially robbing them of the entire release structure for their fourth record. And there are countless stories of this shameless pouring out, but that is not why I'm here today. I only wanted to provide context. What I am nostalgic for is a very specific piece of Victory Records. And that was their short-lived TV web series, Vic TV. T or V? Tully or Vision? What? <laughs> Why would it be T or V? I used to preload these onto my iPod video, and I would discover the new sounds. I would discover new bands, see if they can pull us back in to that sweet, sweet MySpace scene, and see if we can find some new music. Some new music. Not all these bands deserve to die and decay in the graveyard that is Victory Records in this episode. Quality, quality, quality. I don't know if you picked up on it yet. This entire series is just one big commercial. Hey, we got bands. You can buy the album. We got the catalog. We know you get our fucking catalog. Speaking of quality, the sleeping fucking rolled. On Guitar Hero 3, you play it as a bonus track. Uh, welcome to a special podcast exclusive, Victor V. A podcast exclusive? Look how lucky we are to be receiving such a treat. Who is to 
this poor soul? What is he doing now? What did he say it was? I'm Mark Bub with your Victor V News. Mark Bub. God, what are you up to? I just like to check in and see how people are doing. Ooh, uh, partners with Jeffree Star. Oh, Shane Dawson. We're off to a great start. We're doing great things over here, Mark. What the f*** is this shit? Shop, what do we got? $45 for a hoodie. Eh, it's not bad. Wait, is this it? This is it? I'm glad that Mark landed on his feet after whatever this is for our one year anniversary we've redone the look of victor v so enjoy that and here's what's going on in your music world today this is what's happening in your world in your world why do you look so worried mark this is just a podcast no one's gonna see it there's definitely not gonna be anyone on youtube with a microphone in their hand pointing at your face going hey mark how do you do it never stop selling Madden Football 2007, The Sleeping, Silver Scene Reissues. These episodes always got really annoying because you would see the same fucking band previews again and again. If you're not hyped for the record, then I don't want to hear their fucking single. I don't want to hear it, Mark. I'm trying to find my eye line to yell at him. If I go like this, then it doesn't look like I'm yelling at Mark. So I have to look up here and I go, hey, Mark. You. Their latest album, Discovering the Waterfront, will be reissued with a new DVD included. It comes out September 19th, and next month The Voice set out on a headlining tour with Aiden. But first, let's check out some ska from Catch-22. Whoa! It feels like they're trying to do an MTV news report, where if you don't know, MTV used to be a channel. For me, it was channel 63 and 64. 62 was VH1. Sissy 3 was MTV and 64 was MTV 2. So it feels like they're trying to emulate that here. They're just lacking the production, the charisma. But you heard that right, folks. God, Victory Records also successfully carried on the ska scene with like Voodoo Glow Skulls and The Lawn Shore, The Lawn Shot, The Lawn Beach. I don't know. There, there's a couple of ska bands. And I appreciate that. And Catch-22, love this quality. Best quality. Oh, it's a party song? What a fun surprise. I didn't even know there was a music video for this. Today is the day, well, tomorrow we live, so we can keep this party going for the rest of our lives. Notice how the cartography has not stopped once. It just keeps going. Just go to victoryrecords.com, baby. Did you see the albums are coming out? Did you hear The Sleeping has a new album? Hey, I know you're trying to hear this new Catch-22 song, and it's a fucking banner. And we definitely want you to buy that, too. But don't, don't you forget about the other stuff. You gotta buy the other stuff. And buy I did. Wait, you want to see the... Oh, fucking hold on. This is the single most Victory Records item I could ever think of owning. Between... The Buried in Me Sweatpants. Do you remember these? <laughs> Every year, you would get the catalog. It was like 20 pages deep. And I would just pick out everything I wanted. And I said, Mom, what's my budget? I leave her a Christmas list with everything circled in the catalog. Everything I really liked, I would double circle it. Calling the Victory Records man and putting my order. Looking at the item numbers. So yes, all of this. This entire process is very nostalgic for me. I guess what I never realized when I was a kid is just like how much I am being sold to, how much I am being marketed to. Catch Wayne 2, I would say, is a true, down to earth, good fucking band in every aspect. Their instrumentals, their vocals, their live performance, every aspect of Catch 22 is fucking stellar. But then you have other bands. That would just have like a single. Okay, I know what type of band you're trying to make them out to be. And then you listen to the CD and the single is not evocative of the entire band at all. Oh, the Black Maria. This is a band I want to feel like I really, really loved. But I think it's just this one song. Do you remember the Hawthorne Heights CD where it was like, two halves and it's like you gotta get the full story you gotta buy both halves of the cd to get the full story but there weren't any different songs on the second cd all it was was two booklets 
one side with a boy on it, one side with a girl on it. And when you looked at the two booklets, they were vaguely looking at each other. It told a story. And you just had to buy the CD twice to get that story. Oh, Victory Records, what were you doing to these bands? Fuel by Ramen did this shit too, where it's like, you gotta have the live DVD, you have to have the live album, we gotta put out the deluxe CD with the acoustic version or the whatever. It just fucking sucked that it was a genre that entirely hinged on a younger demographic by taking something that connects to you. Because you're a sad little emo in your room, being all confused about gender and stuff, and then seeing all these men wearing eyeliner and makeup presenting themselves as more feminine makes you feel connected for once, and then you realize... They're just trying to sell you shit. Look, this CD has the live, it's a photo. It's not that very beautiful art that defines Silver Sea. No, we took a photograph. Isn't that cool? And yes, that was a version I had. I will admit, I'm part of the problem. But I was also 12. I want music to be pure. I want it to mean something. Is this is a PSA. I'm not seeing any evidence of Victor and me existing. Don't have time to waste. Why visit empty space? Take that MySpace, f***ing <laughs> Victor me that dot com. Big spikes, big spikes in 2008. Let me see this shit. This is the Victor me website from 2008. November sits. 2008 so you can chat browse register sign in victor stream i'm sure that's just a constant stream of uh new albums to buy victor me is a social network for victory records and everyone else really register now we complain about streaming services these days like oh there's paramount plus and discovery plus gets overwhelming and it's frustrating and it's funny that like this shit was happening with social media where it's like everyone had a social media platform or site like that was the big thing and it's weird that like facebook twitter and instagram are the only ones to really survive but that's also because they're probably owned by the devil Ooh, featured artist william control of of Aiden, Seattle native. The smoke clears and the whisper waves of self-mutilation. I can see the dark sky fall to pieces. The world is sometimes too heavy to breathe and the dead surround me like an ocean. I can't recognize a reflection looking back through the mirror. We got some treats for you. What kind of treat? Oh, they only have 110 fans. That's so embarrassing. That's, oh, that's so funny. Yo, Mark. Whoa. You're making Mark look so cool. He doesn't deserve that at all. Records has announced the signing of two of the hottest underground groups in the country. From Ocala, Florida is a day to remember. Who have already oh, played over Scarla. 200 shows around the country. Yo, They'll cut their debut remember. victory beginning in October. Blown up Cincinnati music beneath scene. the sky. They too have toured coast to coast. Up. Kind of uh, fizzled out. They kind of died metal. really They're in the studio uh, right now working slowly. on the new album. Check out both their bands on their MySpace pages. On their MySpace pages. Oh. Meanwhile, the hardcore heathens. This is when I would always perk up when I was watching these videos in bed. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm 13. You can't tell me what to like. Little pet peeve. If you're gonna record a music video where your whole band is playing their instruments, bring a microphone. You look so goofy just screaming out into the void, screaming out into nothing. I mean, you look tough. You look tough. That is true. You look super tough, sir. I don't think I ever got into Bury Your Dead. Any Bury Your Dead fans out there? Are they dope? Do they put on good shows? They seem like they would be kind of dope live. Or they could be kind of douchey. That's the thing about Victory Records metal bands. Most of them were kind of douchey. A lot of them kind of like perpetuated this bully jock metal. Or just like, we're tough guys. We drink fucking monster. We ride motorcycles. Fuck you. Not saying that these guys are that, but that's sort of the vibe I'm getting from them. And also like you're playing your instruments, but you didn't plug it. I don't know. If you want enough of the illusion that they're playing their instruments, but plugging them in, having him having a microphone. Why would we bother? I'm digging this song though. Seattle boys, what's up? What's up? I can't hear you. I couldn't hear you. This video brings back memories. If you want to make me nostalgic, put on the last day on 
this band used to play a lot around Washington, a lot with Aiden. Aiden and them would play a lot of shows together. And they always put on a good show. When I saw them, they actually had a different singer, and he was the singer that I remember seeing live the most, and that's kind of when they were good. But then I don't think they ever put out a second album. This is the only album they have. You can tell that Victory Records just wanted another Aiden from Seattle. Blood and strange and life inside of me and fills your soul with love and hate and all those things you need to Just like vampire gothy kids that make very mediocre screamo. You cannot get any more peak scene than this. Black suits, black bangs, black eyeliner. There's meaning in the static. I do a lot of this. I do a lot of, of these. They're just like Alisana too. A band I love. And it's like, if you're gonna steal from bands, they might as well be good bands. That about wraps it up for this exclusive podcast of Victor V. You're looking to what's going on in your music world today. What's going on in your music world today? I wonder if Mark ever got over his fear of hosting. High footage of Silver Scene. There's gonna be live. Did you fucking. Holy shit, there's gonna be live footage of Silver Scene. I used to stare at these babies. Oh, I'm gonna. C I love these. These are so sexy. You think there's still a warehouse somewhere with all these prints on them? God damn, how long is this outro going? And that was a brief look into Victory Records. I hope I provided an idea of why it was so popular and how they sold themselves to the kids, you know? I feel like this is a cornerstone of who I am and it's really hard to navigate nostalgia when it's tied to something you so fundamentally disagree with. Something I so fundamentally kinda hate. It's like your heroes are problematic. It's like how, how, ugh, how do I still enjoy their art? I don't know, I'm broken now. And next time I revisit Victory Records, I hope to provide a little more context, a little more background. I'm Grayson Todd. Thank you for watching. Stay sweaty, stay posy, watch some good shit, and I will talk to you later. Toodles. Microfilm is kind of fun. Might use it more. I don't know. 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 Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Ooh. I can go anywhere with the microphone. It's so fun. It's so convenient. So convenient. Okay, end this. <sighs>